we've learned about several different types of bonds in this class. So we're going to review them and learn again how we can tell the difference between them. Atoms form bonds to become lower in energy and more stable. That's because they want to feel like they have a full octet, like a noble gas. There are different types of bonds, and the type of bond that forms depends on the difference in electronegativity level between the atoms. That tells us what exactly is happening to those bonding electrons. If your delta chi, your electronegativity difference, is greater than 2, that's a really large gap, so those electrons are going to be transferred outright. You're going to ionize your two atoms. So this becomes an ionic bond, which is held together by electrostatic attraction. The examples of this are sodium chloride and iron 3 oxide. If, however, your gap is a little smaller, your delta chi is between 2 and 0 0.4, that's small enough that those electrons are going to be shared, but there's enough of a gap that they're going to be unevenly shared. The more electronegative atom is going to hog a lot of the electrons. The sharing makes this a covalent bond, and the fact that it's an uneven sharing means that it's going to be polar. Examples of this are oxygen-hydrogen bonds and carbon-fluorine bonds. Lastly, if your delta chi is really small, under 0.4, then those electrons are going to be evenly shared. We've got nonpolar bonding. If that's between two nonmetals, that's a pure covalent bond. Two specific atoms are evenly sharing one particular pair of electrons. On the other hand, if it's between metals, then you have metallic bonding, which we discussed earlier in the semester. All of the valence electrons are shared by all of the atoms involved. And examples of that are pure bismuth or maybe a mercury and silver amalgam. So there we go. That's the type of bonds. Remember to always check your delta chi, and I will see you in class.